Welcome to my first thoughts on the winter of 2015. Uh, this isn't an official forecast. This is more of uh, just a look at what could happen based on the factors I'm looking at today. Uh, I'll put out a real forecast sometime in late October, early November. But right now, I want to start off. This is last winter. We all know it was very cold. Okay, it's something that you're not going to see every year. It has happened before. Uh, you know, we're looking past a few decades back. But again, very extreme. I think this winter coming up, from what I'm seeing now, should be colder than normal. But it's not going to be as cold as last winter. And I think we'll see more shots at um, coastal storms. Or last winter, it was a lot of clippers that redeveloped. And we had one big coastal, coastal storm back in February. But when you're taking a look at how to make these forecasts, you have to look at the oceans. And the oceans really drive the whole climate. That, along with the sun, really determines where the jet stream sets up. And the jet stream either allows cold air to sink or takes warm air rising from the south. And last winter, the reason why it was so cold is because you had a tremendous amount of warm water in the northeastern Pacific. This causes high pressure to form, okay, because warm air expands, basically high, high pressure forms in those areas, and the jet stream has to go over the top of that high pressure and, it, and dip back down over the east, and it pulls in all the cold air from the northern latitudes. And last winter, there was a lot of snow up there, so it really got brutally cold. Uh, so really, we're going to have to look at what happens to the oceans this upcoming winter. And if we take a look at what the models are saying, uh, this is a multi-model of a bunch of different uh, climate models. It's keeping that warm pool in the Pacific, and that tells me we should have more ridging and more high pressure maintained there. It uh, doesn't mean it's going to be as cold as last year, but it means we're going to have opportunities for cold shots this upcoming winter. This region is also very important. It's where you hear, hear something called El Nino. When this is warmer than normal, you have El Nino. When it's cold than normal, you'll have La Nina. Now, this model is a little aggressive on the El Nino. It develops a pretty strong El Nino. I don't think it's going to develop that strong. I think this is going to be a weak El Nino. And when you have a weak El Nino, that also dictates what the jet stream does. So here you can see in a weak El Nino what happens to the jet stream. This is a, a decent graphic from AccuWeather, and it shows that the jet can split and it can cause the two branches to merge, causing uh, wet or snowy weather. Now, many times we've had strong El Ninos where we just had a very big westerly flow and the snow was locked up to the north. But this winter, I think we're going to have one factor that's really going to take this jet stream and suppress it south, and that's going to be something called the North Atlantic Oscillation. All that means is high pressure forms over Greenland. Okay, When high pressure forms over Greenland, the jet stream has to, has to, has to basically dip over here because it gets blocked off by, <clears throat> by, by a ridge. And you, and you have storms that come in off the Pacific, have to redevelop down here and ride up the coast. If you did not have a, ne a negative North Atlantic Oscillation, a lot of times you'll see storms that cut inland, hit the Great Lakes and other areas. But this year, especially since the models are predicting the water should remain decently warm, that should cause high pressure to form and cause a negative North Atlantic Oscillation. Now, I'm really simplifying this. There's other factors, too. Factors such as the sun, which has been in a very, very weak state. This is over the last 10 years, okay? This shows something called solar AP. And basically, you can see, compared to the, this, we're in a solar maximum right now. And compared to the last maximum, um, we're a lot lower. And that causes high latitude blocking, uh, what I'm talking about. And if you look at in history, when, when the solar has been this low, you have seen pronounced high-pressure areas develop over Greenland. Um, in terms of climate models, a lot of the American and uh, other models look at are calling for a warm winter. And a lot of that, I think, is because they're overplaying the El Nino. Also, in other cases, uh, you, have, you have models that are showing a warm pool here, but then you look at what they say the jet stream is going to do. This is a different model at the same point. Uh, they say the jet stream is going to dip, but it doesn't make sense for a jet stream to dip and, and be a trough here if there's a lot of warm water. So we have to wait and see what the models turn out and say. Uh, this is one of the Japanese models. This is calling for a very, very cold winter. Um, again, it was pretty accurate last year. Um, I don't tend to disagree with it, but we still have to wait and see. And again, the sea surface temperatures, again, here's that warm pool, here's that weak El Nino, and here's that warmer than normal weather over at Greenland to cause uh, that negative North Atlantic oscillation. And you can see a combination of a lot of the models for El Nino right now, they're averaging out for December, January, February, anywhere between 0.5 and 1. And that, again, is a weak El Nino, which would follow a graphic similar to this. Okay, The low sun, like I said, would support more blocking in these regions. So combine a ridge, blocking, and a weak El Nino, you could see how it looks as if this winter can be a cold and stormy winter coming up. The magnitude of that, again, I will not get into until... Uh, um, early um, November or October. And in summary, I want to show you here, this is what I'm thinking. Again, a true winter forecast and that can be into the fall. 
However, if you look at a lot of things such as El Nino, uh, the sun, oceans, uh, wind profiles in the upper atmosphere, and where the models project these factors are going to go, and then compare them through history, when has the atmosphere looked like that, uh, we can get a general idea. And right now, it looks like the winter is going to have a negative North Atlantic oscillation, should have a ridge out west because of the warm in the North Pacific, which can cause colder and stormier than normal conditions. And again, like I said, I'm going to be monitoring these factors, especially those ocean temperatures. And my final forecast will come out sometime in late October, early November. Uh, those are just some initial thoughts for now. I hope you got a general idea. I tried to rush through it. I don't want to make this video too long. But uh, you'll see graphics and um, a consolidated and extended version of a, a winter forecast uh, later this fall. Thanks for checking in.